we can do a little bit better. Praise the Lord, everyone. We don't have a house full, but we have where two or three are gathered. There the presence of the Lord is going to be in our midst. I'm believing that in Jesus' name. How about you? I come to worship him today. I come to praise him. I come and give him all the glory. I want to read a scripture to you this morning. All week in my prayer time and in my Bible reading time, it just kept going over in my head, the grace and the mercies of the Lord. The grace and the mercies of the Lord. I am so thankful for His mercy. Let me say that again. I am so thankful for His mercy. Folks, that is what has kept me, is His mercy. I am so unworthy to be standing where I'm standing here today. I am so unworthy to sit in the pew next to my wife. But it's the mercy. It is the mercy of God that has kept me. And I am so thankful from the bottom of my heart. I am so thankful for His mercies. In Psalms 106 and 1, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why do we give thanks unto the Lord? For He is good. And not only in his good is He good, but His mercy, it endureth forever. So if you're going through something today, if you are lukewarm, if you are backslidden, and you say, I'm no good no more. I can't feel what I once felt. I I come to church and I can't feel it. You start praising God for the mercy that endureth forever. It endures forever. And you start praising Him and you start worshiping for that mercy that endureth forever. Maybe you're here today for the first time and you have never experienced the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you might think, I'm a no good sinner. God doesn't care for me. I'm telling you, he went to a cross on Calvary. And his mercy, it endured forever for you here today. Maybe you are full of the Holy Ghost. Maybe your cup is running over today. Maybe the cares of this world hasn't got you down at all. Maybe you are just bubbling over and your cup is full. But I'm here to tell you that the mercies of God want your cup to run over. He wants to bless you here today. So as we begin to sing and we begin to praise God, I want you to worship Him and praise Him for mercy. Just think about everything that you're going through and get your mind upon God and start to believe Him and start to thank Him. Why? For His mercy because that's what's kept you is the mercies of God. Let's praise Him right now for His mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you, God, for your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Every praise. Every praise. Come on, let's worship him. Let's block out everything else. Let's block it all out. Our minds are upon God and his mercy. And his mercy.
I feel in the house today? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 and 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. No matter what your situation may be, God hears your prayers. He will, he will continue to make a way for you in those situations. He hears our prayers and keeps them in his hands. Aren't you glad we serve a God today that keeps your name, Lord, and his prayers, keeps them, Lord, that he continues to watch over you and protect you each and every day and touch your situations, no matter how hard it may be. Thank you, Jesus. I worship your name. We're going to go in a time of prayer, so if you can stand. Brother David do the for the third <laughs> had a foot injury and we would like to pray for him that he gets a full recovery and we want to pray for Brother Flowers that he gets a full recovery and for our schools coming back I know school starting up very soon in the next couple weeks and some of them even next week and we just want to pray for each and every student that you know the Lord's will be done this school year and also for our P7 that uh, we're going to continue to do uh, live streams on Instagram and we're going to get a Facebook account as well and continue to minister to the kids, you know, through Facebook and Instagram. So continue to pray for our P7 club as well. And then I want to pray also for our world and just government overall. You know, it's a hard time and it's just, you know, very discouraging at times. So we got we to gotta keep our head up, keep going forward because, you know, God's coming soon. He's going to be here and you know, we just got to be ready for that. And we want to continue to pray for St. James Manor, the nursing home. Obviously, we have not been able to, you know, minister to them uh, these past couple months. But we just want to continue to pray for them, that they would have peace and joy and continue to feel God's presence, even though we may not be there. So if we could just go in a time of prayer today. In Jesus' name, I'm asking the Lord you touch all these needs today, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, God. Lord, you touch each and every need. Lord, we place them in your hands. We know, Lord, that you're going to touch each and every need. Lord, you're going to make a way. You're a way maker, God, and a miracle worker. Lord, we worship your name and we're exalting your name. We already know, Lord Jesus, that you're going to touch these needs today and that you will make a way, God, because you are the healer and the protector, God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Prince of Peace, touch all the unspoken needs as well, God. You know those situations. Touch each and every one that may be battling sickness right now. God, that you would heal their body, Lord. Touch them, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, God. That your healing power would be upon them. Give them peace of mind. Help your joy, Lord, for the people, Lord, that are discouraged in this time. Lord, I feel in this dark place, God, Lord, that you would Lord, show your light, Lord, that we would be light workers, Lord, that we would be, you would continue to move away, Lord, Jesus, have a way, Lord, in our lives, help us, Lord, to continue to minister, Lord, Jesus, the ones in the nursing homes, God, give them peace, Lord, help them, Lord, to feel your joy, it's a hard time, Lord, but we know that you will continue to make a way, Lord, God, and your will will be done, Lord, in these situations, God, we worship your name, we exalt your name, we thank you for what you're going to do in these needs, Lord, touch each and every one in Jesus' name, amen.
today. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated today. What a beautiful presence of the Lord that's here. Amen, amen. Worship with Sister Bowski as she plays for us this morning.
Molex, I'd like you to give a quick testimony. I appreciate Sister Molex. We've known her for about the last 15 years or so. Her parents pastored in Ford Heights, a great apostolic church. Give us a quick testimony, would you? Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, she has. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Yes, He is. He is a strong tap. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God orchestrates. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. We do honor her and her parents for their years of ministry in this region. And, uh, I know it was it was big loss not only to their family but to the apostolic movement here in the south suburbs. But uh, I praise God for the legacy, Amen, that continues on through her, and, and I just thank the Lord for that. Praise God, praise God. I've been it's been good to be here, hadn't it? Hallelujah! I direct you to the Word of the Lord while you're standing to the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, John chapter number 14, Amen. And uh, while we are going to be emphasizing, uh, uh, putting our emphasis upon verse uh, number six, I just feel like it would only be right to begin with verse number one. John chapter number 14, beginning with verse number one, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, hallelujah, and receive you unto myself. I'm going up yonder, hallelujah, that where I am, there you may be also, and whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Praise God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. A simple message today, Jesus is, Jesus is the truth. He is the truth. We thank you today, God, for the wonderful truths that you have brought to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are the embodiment of truth. And we can come into the truth by, Lord, coming into Christ. And we pray today, Lord, that each and every one that hears this message, each and every one here today, God, has stepped into that understanding and that revelation has come to them. We thank you for it, God. Speak to us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. By those that are watching by way of Facebook Live, we appreciate you joining with us. And, or maybe you're gathering on YouTube here in a little while. Praise the Lord. Amen. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. It would only be fitting before I get into my message today to give a number of thank yous. Um, and uh, we appreciate Brother Devin, Brother Kelvin, Brother Jody, and Brother Paul. And all of them have the same last name, which is what? Rita. Rita's. 
Amen. All of these men were big time involved around here this week. And, and there were some others doing different things. But that um, storm that came through Monday night ripped up a bunch of shingles on the north side and the west side of the church. And uh, just just appreciate these uh, men coming out and uh, just tacking it all back up for us. And uh, then Brother Paul Reedus and, and Brother Randy Wilman, they've been working on the baptismal tank. And thankfully, amen, that is all done. And uh, we appreciate getting these things done. <laughs> amen. Thank you, men, and all that have uh, just done so much. Amen. Sister Anderson and all of her team keeping us sanitized and clean around here. And uh, just uh, thanking the Lord for... For all that participate, it takes a lot of people, a lot of people to make any service go. Uh, from those working uh, to uh, lead the service, those that are helping with the media team, those that are just preparing. Amen. So many different people are involved, and we just thank you. And uh, we don't say it enough, but what a, what a great group of people gather here regularly at First Apostolic Church. Give yourself a hand and look around and wave at somebody and say, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. Recently, I watched about 30 seconds of an interview of a certain musical entertainer who happens to be currently getting her 15 minutes of fame. I didn't catch her name, and I probably wouldn't recognize her again if I happened to see her on another channel or pass her even on the street. But before I scrolled to other news items, I did catch a particular statement that she made in that interview. And it kind of just jarred me a little bit. She said, I'm just out there telling my truth what is important to me. I'm just out there telling my truth. It was the way that she emphasized strongly the words, my truth, that caught my attention. I began to think about that. Now, I, again, I, I didn't listen to her whole interview. I don't know if she's a Christian, not a Christian. I, I, I can't, I'm not judging her life. I don't know anything about her except I don't think that that's two words, those two words, my truth, uh, should be in any of our mouths. I believe that we must be very careful when we begin to take truth and personify it in our own life. It caught my attention because while we may say I have an opinion, you may say I have an assumption, you may say this is my point of view. It's altogether differently when you declare something to be your truth. This is my truth. For it's truth as she defines it for herself as a 20-something with a growing celebrity status. It's, it's truth, I think, as she wants the truth to be for her. It's truth that isn't the mirror that she looks into to make the necessary adjustments to her life, but rather she herself is the mirror for truth. You could call it a designer truth, so to speak. It's able to take this and add this and remove this until you end up with something that you like, something that fits you as an individual, something that uh, you can then say, I have adjusted this and now it is truth that I can hold to, truth that I can believe in, truth that I want to tell the world and everybody will know what I believe. I've heard similar reasonings coming out of the mouths of many that have been looting in these uh, days that we're living in as they're interviewed by newscasters on the streets about why, why are you taking it to this level? It's one thing to stand outside and to hold a sign and to, to speak what you believe, but, but, but when you take it to that point of breaking and entering and stealing other people's property, that is not, isn't it not immoral? Isn't it not wrong? And to a man, you will hear these individuals say like this, well, you know, looting a store is itself not immoral. It's not wrong for me to break in there and steal that because it's just stuff. It's just material things. And it's stuff that can be replaced by an insurance. I've heard that in many different Interviews. Well, insurance will take care of it. Insurance will just provide whatever they need there. And so they act as if insurance is always going to be available to the shopkeepers. 
They have no clue how insurance works because most of them being young haven't had to start paying for it yet. Hey, insurance is expensive. And insurance companies can write up policies and they can take things out of policies. They can, they can remove certain things and you can have what looks to be a, a, I almost said Cadillac, forgive me. You can have a Lincoln policy of an insurance and you can think I've got everything that I need there. But then they've stricken out certain things and you go to use it and they say, well, no, that's not covered because see, that was an act of God, they would say. Or that's not covered because that was an act of a terrorism. And oh, that's not covered because, you know, those things uh, aren't just typical run of the mill that, that we offer. And then, you know, whenever you have insurance policies, there's deductibles that have to be paid, right? You have a wreck in your car and you might have a $500 deductible or a $1,000 deductible and you've got to come up with that money and so that the insurance will release the money. But it's just insurance. It's no big deal. They can replace everything. They'll have it boarded up in 30 minutes and new glass by the next day and uh, they'll be back selling whatever they're selling in just a couple days or so. It's no big deal. Well, Jesus says otherwise and the Word of God says otherwise. Amen. What about the eighth commandment that says do not steal? Amen. Even if insurance is going to cover it, it doesn't make a difference. It's still stealing. You're still taking something that's not yours. Even if you think it's some kind of a, a, of a statement by taking it, you have made a decision to steal. And therefore you have made a decision to break a commandment of God and there is now sin that can be put on your account. And Satan is always looking for an open door to afflict and to bring, amen, his judgment against our lives. There is a, a sin to stealing and stealing destroys community. You let the shopkeeper get broken into so many times and pretty soon he's going to put a for sale sign up. And then the next person comes by and says, well, why are you selling? Well, I just have to get out of here. It's, I, can't, I can't trust the clientele. The neighborhood is not protecting me and we're not, it's not a, a good relationship anymore. And so what happens is, is nobody wants to buy that building. And, and then that building sets dormant for a while and, uh, and nobody comes in there. And pretty soon the next door building goes away and the next door office goes Goes away, and pretty soon you're left with, with blocks of devastation, all because people thought insurance could take care of it. We've got to be very careful that these kind of ideas don't get in our mind, and this is my truth. This is what I believe is right, and if I act in this way or manner, it's no big deal. And brothers and sisters, I, I've come to preach today that there is a truth that's bigger than you and I. There is a truth that is sovereign. There's a truth that is overarching. There is a truth that's all-powerful. Amen, amen. Paul writing to the church in Ephesus in Ephesians 4, 28 said, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Paul said, not only should you stop stealing, but you should start working, and you should start working so that you can bless other people. That's how you build community right there. Amen. That's how you strengthen bonds of relationship right there. Amen. You turn from being the problem to being the solution. Amen. Amen. Jesus, in Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 19, he said this, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. Amen. Jesus said, You've heard these things. And he was repeating these commandments, thus giving them validity in the present day. Amen. Amen. Thereby, it's not just Moses' truth. It'd be easy to say, well, that used to be under Moses. That used to be under our great-grandfather. That, that was important for previous generations, but Jesus said, no, that is important today. It does not change. It still remains true. Amen. And it'll always be true. Praise God. And truth does not have to be updated. It doesn't have to be modernized. It doesn't have to be shifted and adjusted so that it fits the present moment that we're living in. How, how did we get 
here? How, how did we get to such a time and place where we can replace the idea of this grand truth of God, this overarching truth that everyone is responsible for and could be judged by to these designer truths that people can kind of build their own little doctrine and build their own little idea and just kind of make it plain how they like it and then begin to present it to others as if it is the ultimate truth. Well, we've gotten there over many, many, many years uh, of just not giving heed to the truth. We have a very liberal culture that we that we live in. And, and uh, even the, the premise of what it means to be liberal means that, that, that you are ingratiatingly tactful and well-mannered. I'm going to share a quote here from Nathaniel Urshan, one of the previous uh, uh, preachers of this gospel. And, and um, a liberal feels like it's so important that a person does not offend anyone else by uh, holding to a particular view. That if you have an oppos- opposing point of view than I do, then, then we're just going to live and let live. And, and, and your truth is just as important as my truth. And liberalism pr- prioritizing, uh, prioritizes place more Excuse me. It prioritizes place more uh, than anything else. It, it, the importance there is that it's better to get along than it is to be right. It's better to be polite than it is uh, 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 to, to act in a manner or preach or teach anything that could possibly hurt the feelings of, of someone else. In a liberal society, you're free to embrace any opinion and you can choose that opinion without having any kind of stigma that is, a, that is placed upon you unless, unless you maybe might be conservative and, and um, unless you might be an apostolic Christian, then all of a sudden you're the one everybody can throw uh, the rock sat, so to speak. You know I'm telling you the truth today. Amen. Amen. Everybody's trying to be civil in the society. Everybody's trying to defer to one another. And, and everyone's just trying to, to stay out of the way because, you know, there's no real way to, to know the truth. In this society, people say there's, there's no real complete truth. There's no holistic truth. There's that, that you can believe a part of it and I can believe a part of it. And uh, then we can all just do whatever we really want to do because there's no truth that we are ultimately accountable for. Now, there's some good things about that, and that is, is that it does open up discourse in a better way, and it, it does allow for more of a peaceful coexistence, and people can bring things out in the public square for debate and, and the opportunity to uh, share ideas as, uh, uh, and so forth, but, but the reality is, is that when it's taken to that extreme Amen. When you go a long way with the liberal mentality, what happens is, is you are open to anything and everything and nothing matters ultimately. Amen. A mind that feeds on such openness is actually feeding on nothing. And a mind that is substituting courtesy for ideas and good manners for genius will starve itself into mediocrity. Without the hammer ringing against the anvil, the steel of inspiration is never formed. Without the whetstone rubbing the blade, the edge of truth is never, never honed. I tell you today, that's how we got there. We got there in in, in a society like we are now where everybody says, no, you you don't have to listen to me really. I'm just going to I'm just going to speak my truth and 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 you speak your truth and everybody just sings their little song and does their little dance. And it's okay, brothers and sisters, uh, there's a danger in all of that. Uh, Amen. There's a danger uh, in substituting your words for what's clear in this book. Uh, There's a danger. Amen. There's a danger in believing that I can put my words up on par with the words of God. 
It's a dangerous place when one begins to set the standard for themselves. Amen. And the truth becomes a mirror of their own life. Amen. But how can then we be certain of truth in such a compromised culture? How can we be certain? How, how can we really know that what we're believing is, is not just a, a mixture of things that has come about from the movies that we've watched and the songs? that we've listened to and the education that we've received in the school. How, how can we truly, truly know that what we believe is real? Well, I'm going to preach this final point of my message as clearly and as simply as I possibly can. There is so much in our world today that is confusion and chaos and perplexity. There is so much in our world today that is that seems to be right for the moment, but then you let let a little bit of time pass and people say, well, we don't believe that no more and we don't keep to that anymore and that's not important anymore. That was important in the 60s, but it's not important in the 70s. That was important in the 80s, but it's not important in the 2010s and on and on and on we begin to just kind of rewrite truth and, and refashion it and we make it politically correct. We've compromised in so many different ways that sometimes we don't even know the foundation of our own truth is compromised. Amen. People don't even realize that the things that they're spouting out of their mouth come from a faulty foundation themselves. That is why, friend, we need something that stood the test of time. That's why you need something that's been true throughout every generation of mankind. That's why we need something that I can build my life upon today. Amen. Where the storm comes against that and the wind blows against that, but I'm found upon a rock that is strong. I built my house upon the rock Christ Jesus. I built my life upon the rock Christ Jesus. Amen. Every time it's been tested, it's been tried, and it's been found, amen, to be capable of standing against the storm. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Truth is not just a collection of ideas. Truth is not just a formulating of doctrines. Those things can be part of the truth, but they are not by themselves alone truth. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus Christ. You and I can be certain of this one thing as we go through perplexing times where things that we see don't always even make sense. Amen. Things that we hear, we can't even trust. Am I hearing the truth? Amen. You can, you can mix up all kinds of things and, and we don't even know who to believe sometimes. This fact and that fact and, and this statement and that statement, all oh, they come out and, and they seem to maybe have have a little, a little bit uh, therein that uh, should be believed, but then later, later it just kind of fades away. But I tell you, when you love Jesus uh, and when you have Jesus in your life, uh, John 14 and 6, uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, I am the truth. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. As long as I have him, uh, I have truth. Uh, as long as he's speaking in my ear, I hear truth. Uh, as long as he's standing before me, I see truth. As long as I feel him in my soul, I feel truth. Truth all around me. Truth above me. Truth behind me. Truth in front of me. Truth beneath me. I'm surrounded in Christ. In him I live and move and have my being. I am complete in him. I'm complete in the truth because he is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not preaching some cliche today. I'm not preaching some kind of idea that just tries to make us feel good. But it really doesn't hold any water. No, friend. When you submit to Jesus Christ and you humble yourself to Jesus Christ and you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, he said, I will lead you and I will guide you into all truth. It's not my truth. It's his truth. It's not your truth. It's his truth. It's not a truth. It's the truth. It's not just going to be popular today. It's going to exist and be around forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. 
Oh, praise God. Amen. You may be seated for just a few more moments. Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter number 5, verses 17 through 18. He was questioned over and over again because there were things that he taught that seemed to go against the main ideas of the day, especially the ones that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were holding on to. They were troubled by some of the things that he said. Amen. When he would speak, people would leave, amen, off from listening to him saying things such as never a man spake as this man spake he moved them with his parables amen he stirred them with his miracles amen they were left all stricken he was the talk of the town the region the country the nation amen people spoke of this rabbi with his awesome words of power and authority behind them but the Jewish leaders of the day would come to him with questions and they would say it seems like you're trying to usurp Moses it seems like you're trying to do away with the law and we've always had the law and we've always tried to abide by this and what is some of these things that you are teaching us that seems to go against it Jesus said this amen in Matthew 5 17 think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets I'm not here to uproot your foundational truths I'm not here to try to turn over everything uh, that has made this nation uh, the nation that it is. I have not come to destroy this nation. I have not come to destroy your laws. I have not come to destroy your prophetic voices. Uh, I have not come to rewrite your history. I've not come to try to rework everything after what I think it should look like. Uh, I'm not here uh, to make all those things uh, that have been uh, a part of what you believe uh, a man now of no effect I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill it Amen. I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all shall be fulfilled. Jesus said, all that you have known in the law and the prophets was but a foreshadow of me. Every truth that you have believed up to this point was just signposts along the roadside pointing towards an end. And that end is me. He said, I am the embodiment of the truth. I am the way. I am the life. You're not going to find it just by trying to consider other truths. You're not going to find it just by keeping to the law and the prophets. You will find life when you find me. You'll find truth when you find me. You'll find hope when you find me. Who is this Jesus? Who is this man? He was more than just a carpenter. He was more than just a rabbi. He was more than just a Nazarite. He was God manifest in the flesh. How do we know that? The gospel of John chapter number one. Oh, I feel my help coming now. John chapter number one, beginning with verse number one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning beginning with God and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made Jesus is not just one person in a trinity Jesus is God manifest in the flesh he's the son of God and he's the son of man he's the holy one of Israel he's the El Shaddai he's Jehovah Jireh he's Jehovah Rapha he's Jehovah Nisi he's Jehovah Shalom. He's all of those compound names of Jehovah. He is Jehovah's Savior. Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Savior. Oh, let's clap our hands under the Lord and give him praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He is not Jehovah Junior. He is Jehovah manifest in the flesh. The word was God. Amen. John 1.17 says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Up until Jesus Christ, you had the law. Amen. It was incomplete. It was imperfect. Oh, yes, there's beauty in there, and there's righteousness in there, but it was unfulfilled. You needed Christ to come and take upon himself the law and the prophets and manifest 
manifest it and fulfill it. And now Jesus Christ is the highest law. Amen. He's the highest of all of the word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. John 1, 1, 14. Amen. Says the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Amen. The word, the word, the word that was in the beginning. The word that was God. Amen. Was made flesh. Amen. And dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of. The glory. Amen. On par with the glory. Equal to the only begotten of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. Uh Uh-huh. Amen. I'm not just going to know that celebrity's truth. She's not going to take me very far. Again, I don't know the woman. I, I, I don't know, but I, I just know what she thinks to be her truth. If it don't have Jesus Christ right smack dab in the middle of it, uh, amen, if it's not what she's speaking of when she says this is my truth, I can stand up here today and say Jesus Christ is my truth. Uh, amen, I hold him to be the truth. I have no other truth but him. Uh, him crucified. Uh, him buried. Uh, and him resurrected. Uh, and him coming back. Uh, amen. We sang about it just a little while ago. He lived. He died. Amen. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified me. Freed me forever. One day, he's coming back. Does your truth, does your truth hold to that truth that one day he's coming back? You say, well, my truth is, is that, you know, Jesus will just help us, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to be better people. Well, that's good. He will. He'll help you to be a better person. My, my truth will, will, will let me know that Jesus can heal me when I'm sick. Well, that's what the Word of God says. Amen. But what do you have in store for those days whenever sickness uh, might take you all the way to a grave? What do you have uh, after the grave? Does your, truth, uh, does your truth have an answer for eternity? Does your truth have an answer? My truth has an answer. My truth has an answer. Jesus has an answer. His answer is that he is going to cause the dead in Christ to rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So shall we ever be with the Lord. I tell you, my truth has an answer. My truth has an answer. My truth has an answer for the problems in our society. My truth has an answer for your your sleepless nights. Uh, my truth has an answer. Amen. For the for the condemnation you feel in your heart. Uh, my truth is the answer for the conviction of sin that you feel in your life. My truth is the answer for the fear that keeps you tormented. My truth is the answer. Oh, hallelujah! For the troubles that you're going through. There's nobody's truth down here on this world that can answer every single concern or problem but when Jesus comes onto the scene oh hallelujah Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, hallelujah, Peter. Peter was fishing all night and had caught nothing. He came back to the seashore and Jesus said, hey, let me get in the boat so I can preach to these people. And he said, all right, take the boat out. Then he told Peter, he said, well, let's just go out a little further and let down your nets for a drought. And Peter said, master, I have toiled all night. Master, my truth is that fish don't bite in the morning. My truth is if you're going to catch a bunch of them you got to go out at night and we've toiled all night and have caught nothing my truth Jesus says that it's not even possible for what you say to happen but there was just enough question in the apostle Peter to know who was speaking to him and he said but nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net he took one single net and put it over the side and the Bible says the fish filled the net until it almost broke and they had to get other ships to come out and help them bring in that load and the Bible says that when Peter got the net to the shore and the fish were safely caught he fell on his knees before the Lord and he said depart from me for I am a wicked evil sinful man Jesus revealed to Peter that your truth might not catch fish but I know how to catch fish your truth might not be the answer but I am the the answer. So stand together with me as I close with this. What limitations do you personally have that your truth 
is not answering. Your truth brought you so far. Your truth got you to this place. Your truth brought you to a pew today. But I have preached to you the truth. And I have said it's time for you to lay your truth at his feet. And take his hand. Oh, hallelujah. I can't even walk without you holding my hand, God. Oh, I can't I can't even move without you. I need you, Lord. I, I don't know uh, my right hand from my left hand. I, I don't know if I should go forward and backward to the right, to the left. But oh, as long as I've got the hand of Jesus uh, that I'm holding on to. His truth endures. His truth endures. His truth. His truth. Hallelujah. He said, I've come to fulfill this. I've come to complete it. I've come to reveal you to you the purpose of it. I, I've come. I've come to answer all the questions. I've come. I've come to be the personification of the truth. I am the truth, Jesus said. I am the truth. And so we can debate. And if you're debating friends or family members, if you're having all kinds of questions back and forth on Facebook and Twitter and all kinds of things with people and it's just their truth versus your truth, you're not going to get anywhere. Your opinion and their opinions don't amount to a hill of beans. But oh friend, the answer that this whole world needs, the answer that you need today, if you're here and you do not know Jesus, you need this answer. Have you tasted and seen the Lord is good? Have you given Jesus a rightful place in your life? You say, well, what will happen? Well, friend, if you invite Jesus into your life by faith, putting your confidence in him to be your savior, suddenly then his truth will begin to show you things in your life that didn't bother you before. They were sin and you didn't realize it because when you looked into your heart, you didn't see anything wrong. When you looked into your soul, you didn't see any sin. You didn't believe sin was even possible. But because you got truth now, truth is shining a light in your life and all of a sudden you don't feel as comfortable with things in your heart that you've lived with forever. And so what do you do? The Bible says repent. You repent of your sins what is that that is identifying with the truth of Jesus confessing your sins to God confess your faults to God confess your sin to God people say I don't believe in sin well your truth will never believe in sin but the word of God says if any man says he has no sin he is a liar and what is not in him if any man say I have not sinned I don't have any sin you're a liar You're a liar, and the truth is not in you. But when you get his truth into your life, suddenly his truth begins to shine in areas. And so now, now you want to repent of your sins. You want to ask Jesus to forgive you. And he will forgive you of your sin, and he will apply his blood that he shed on the cross to your account. The old account was settled long ago. Oh, hallelujah. Because that's the only payment. That's the only payment for justice. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. The shed blood of Jesus Christ did away with the Old Testament laws of sacrifices. His one sacrifice sacrifice paid the price. And then you can have those sins removed. How do you get those sins removed? He said in the waters of baptism. In the waters of baptism. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit fell upon them in the upper room on the day of Pentecost and Peter rose up to preach to the gathered crowd and he said to them that were convicted of the sin in their life, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Remission means removal of sin. You have to get the sin removed by baptism. That is baptism that is based upon your understanding that there is sin in your life. 
That's why we don't baptize babies. We baptize believers. Because you have to come to an understanding that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then you get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You take on his name. You become part of his family. And then he says, I will fill you with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And they shall speak with new tongues as the Spirit of God gives them. And that right there, friend, is the entrance, the glorious entrance into this great salvation, this glorious salvation. But you won't get there with your truth. Your truth will just keep minimizing things. Your truth will just keep changing things. Your truth, your truth will say, there's nothing wrong with me. I don't throw stones at my fellow believers, my fellow Christians that do not identify with Scripture to the exact points that I do. However, I am not leaving what I know. I'm not going to compromise what I know. You say, well, then you're saying that's my truth. No, I believe it's the truth. And I believe you can do a Bible study and you can find out how they changed water baptism from in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. If you look at that, you will see that the Trinity was never anything that was in this Bible, but that was something that came about out of the Catholic Church some 300 years after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. And I love good Catholic people. They make great believers, but many of them are just... They have been caught up in something. You need to study the scripture. You need a Bible study. We'll get you a Bible study. But what is the importance of why everybody that was ever baptized in scripture was baptized either in the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus Christ or the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or in the name of the Lord, which would have been Jesus Christ? You'll never find anywhere in scripture where titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, was used for baptism. Again, we're not throwing stones. We're just saying this is what His Word says. I love you. Please don't hate me. If you don't understand this, I want to talk with you about it later. There is there is a word from the Lord today. Are you weary and heavy laden? Are you troubled on every side? Are you discouraged and distraught today? Have you come to the end of yourself and realized there's still a long way to go? Have you realized that the truth that you have loved and designed for yourself is unable to be of any more service to you? Have you discovered the weakness in your own belief system? Is your worldview without answers in this disastrous day that we're living in? Well, friend, thank God for this disruption. Because this disruption has caused you to realize I need something bigger than myself. I need a mirror that shows me clearly what is true. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus Christ alone is that mirror today. Why don't you just love him right now? If you've never repented of your sins, why don't you just raise your hands right now and say, Jesus... I receive you into my life. I receive your truth into my life because I know that that truth will shine upon my sin and by faith, he that cometh to God must believe. By faith, I believe. I believe today that you can take care of my sin. I believe today that you can give me a new identity. I believe today that you can make me a new creature. I believe today I can be a brand new person. That's what I believe. That's what I believe today. Why don't you just ask the Lord today, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me, God, in Jesus' name. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he's here. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. I place my trust. And you will speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. You will experience a breakthrough. 